This week on Library Beat, I've got my story, and Karen has hers too. Stay tuned as we discuss the greatest country music duo and soap opera of all time, George and Tammy. Karen? Greg? Are we the Jet Set? <laughs> We're not the Jet Set. We're the old Chevrolet Set. Are we the Jones and Winnet Set? We pretty much are. We pretty much are. <laughs> uh, we are going to talk about George and Tammy today. Yes, and I, I hope feel, everyone knows who that is. Well, I feel like this is the podcast we were born to do. Yes. We love some George and Tammy. Um, really do. What brought this up, I believe, is that there's a new-ish uh, TV series called George and Tammy that is just coming out on DVD. So we'll have it here at the library oh. very soon. Uh, it's a... Uh, I think six part musical biopic of wow. the two. And we are referring to George Jones and Tammy Wynette. Wynette. It's yes. not Wynette, it's Wynette. Wynette. And that's our first name, actually. Right. So I recently watched the TV series and it was okay. Yeah, I just, I don't know if I can bring myself to do that. I, I remember when we heard it was coming out, we talked about it a little bit and it just seemed like a bad idea. Yes. And it kind of is a bad idea, <laughs> yes. but they do as well as they can, considering that, you know, George and Tammy aren't around to do it themselves. It, it, it's uh, Jessica Chastain, who's made a career out of playing Tammy's. She also played Tammy Faye. Oh. Yeah. I'm not familiar with this actress. Yeah. She does an okay job. And then Michael Shannon, who is from Arkansas. Really? Plays uh, George. I think w your initial comment was that they are just too good looking to do this. Yeah, they're too good looking. And I think the actor is like probably a foot taller than George. Yes, he is a little <laughs> too <laughs> a little tall. tall for George. They they do okay. I think they do their own singing. It's, oh. it's definitely not George and Tammy singing. No, I don't no. know if someone else dubbed it in or whatever. Um, and they both sound okay. But the whole point behind George and Tammy is their voices, which were just phenomenal. Yes. And you don't really get what was so special about them unless you hear them sing. And you don't hear them sing in the show. You hear these actors trying to sound like them, and they just do okay. What, what do you think is the enduring fascination with George and Tammy? Well, they were both... Great singers yes. and songwriters. Mm -hmm. well, I don't know if George wrote. George wrote some. He wrote some early in his career, and I think when the booze and cocaine took over, he, he couldn't do it anymore. Right. Tammy wrote. She did. Yeah. She was a great uh, songwriter, even though you may not agree with her songs. I mean, she was a great songwriter, and they were mm -hmm. very popular. Tammy Wynette just, I think, spoke to the people. She mm -hmm. was just an everyday person, so to speak. It's like your aunt in the family that's kind of the black sheep, mm -hmm. you know, that she just spoke to, you know, just said what she felt. Right. Um, and it's that, that, that voice. Yes, too. the voice was gritty, kind of. It wasn't as polished maybe as Dolly. Right. Um, and I do love Dolly and I do love me some Loretti. Yeah. But Tammy's always been my favorite. Mm -hmm. I think in, in terms of just vocal ability. Yes. Um, she kind of shines above the other ones. I, I was kind of looking at her contemporaries last night, and, you know, this was a male-dominated field at, oh, the, yes, at yes. the time. There were a, a few who had come through, like Loretta Lynn, who had her own point of, of view. And she has a nice voice, and it, it worked for what she was doing. But she was the song she was singing, she, it worked, she, yes. she was not like a knockout, knock-you-out-of-your-chair no. vocalist. And, uh, you know, Dolly has her own thing. She has that kind of mountain lilt, uh, which is nice. There are some others who have kind of fallen by the wayside. The, the one who always gets bring, brought up as kind of the singer to singer is uh, Connie Smith. Connie Smith? I thought it would be Kitty Wells. Well, not so much her singing. <laughs> Kitty? Kitty. I liked her singing. Yeah. Well, she just kind of sounds like a school a school marm or something. And they know. did an album with her, I think, all three of them, all four of them. Tammy, mm -hmm. Dolly, Loretta. Tammy, Loretti. Dolly, and, and then Kitty Wells made yeah. a surprise guest uh, appearance. I do love Kitty. Yeah. It wasn't God that made Honky Tonk Angels. It was not. <laughs> but, yeah, you're, you're right. Tammy was kind of an every woman. You were just saying before we started this that she never let her beautician's license go. Right. She kept her beautician's license. Current, just in case she needed it, which is like, well, 
something to fall back on. Yeah. I, after I watched the um, TV series, I was curious ab- about more. I like to kind of get obsessed with things. And uh, there's a really good biography of her that I had read years and years ago that we used to have here at the library. Now we have it on Hoopla as an audiobook and an ebook, I, I believe. But it's called Tammy Wynette, Tragic Country Queen. Yes. And it's pretty well done. Yes. Um, and there were some tragedies in her life. Married what, a few times. Yes. She married very young. It was had, not a very happy marriage. No. She had ambition. She wanted to be a singer. Apparently her dad's side of the family was very musical and he died young but he encouraged her to go forward with music but meanwhile she had these babies with this husband and she was trying to do her beautician thing and uh, eventually she just moved to Nashville and she met Billy Sherrill who was one of the kind of big yes he was a songwriter and producer he he kind of crafted that entire sound which I, I was trying to think back if I remember actually hearing much George and Tammy when I was young. And I can't remember specifically hearing them, but that sound is so evocative of being in D-Light, Arkansas in like 1974. I do specifically remember hearing uh, Charlie Rich. Oh, yes. Popular. Who was also produced by Billy Sherrill. And and from Arkansas. And from Arkansas. And uh, that whole sound that kind of added a little bit of pop to the country sound with the strings mm-hmm. and the uh, arrangements and everything, just hearing that really takes you back. Yes, my brother had the old album of Tammy Wynette, Stand By Your Man, and he played that a lot. He was a big, con- he liked country music. And so I remember that from an early age, mm-hmm. early, early age. You know, but she encompassed, she was going to stand by her man. Mm-hmm. But she was also going through a D-I-V-O-R-C-E. Mm-hmm. And then she was going to meet you at apartment number nine. <laughs> so she encompassed everything that was pretty much going on. Mm-hmm. You know, everything that a, a family, a woman could go through. Right. And she had that cry in her voice yes. when she was yes. singing about it um, in the uh, book, uh, Apartment Number 9 was her first single and kind of her breakthrough. It wasn't a huge hit, but it was enough to kind of get her yes. noticed. And it was like saucy. Mm, a little bit saucy. saucy for that time. Yeah. And she had been a big George Jones fan for years because he yes. was older and had been started uh, earlier. And he was In already 50s, a, yes. a, a big deal. But, you know, he was known as being kind of a drunk. Well, a drunk, yes. <laughs> Not that I saw, so I, I'm not going to pass judgment on him, but he had a reputation of of not showing up to shows. And no show Jones. No show Jones and kind of being drunk. And, mm-hmm. But he was so good. He is so talented. Yeah. Uh, his songs were fabulous. And they live on today. And that's just, you know, like you said, Kitty Wells. Well, you don't really hear a lot about Kitty Wells. Mm-hmm. But George Jones you still hear. And people yeah. still uh, cover his songs. Tammy Wynette you still hear about. Well, you know, if you ever see like one of those polls of who is the greatest country singer of all time or what's the greatest country song of all time, it's always George Jones. He stopped loving her today. Because there just is something. That's a haunting song right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was probably his biggest. I think it was just covered by so many people. Mm -hmm. Uh, But it really, and everybody said, well, he's talking about Tammy. But uh, Tammy was married to this guy named Don Chappell, who was kind of a low level Nashville songwriter, producer, not super successful. Um, and she kind of married him to kind of get into the business. I'm not saying she wasn't in love with him. I don't, I, I we don't, don't know. I don't know. That was her second husband. And right. she already had like three babies. But the then she, babies. she started having a little bit of success with her singles, apartment number nine, D-I-V-O-R-C-E. She was going up. It was kind of like a star is born type, right. type thing. And then enter George Jones. That sexy man. <laughs> the possum. Uh, yes. And they kind of hit it off and were doing things in apartment number nine. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, uh, mm. you know, uh, apparently, you know, Tammy had always had a thing for him, uh, at least for his singing. Right. And then they sparked up a relationship. At the time, George Jones was on a different record label. And so he had to get out of his contract with that label in order to record with Tammy. Oh. So they did end up recording together and, um, you know, s- separately they're both great, but get those two together. Yes. And it's just, oh my gosh. Yes. The storytelling 
greatness. Yes, and uh, um, some some of the best country duets. I, I will give kudos to Loretta and Conway. They did some good they ones did too. Some good ones. But there's something about the Tammy and George singing together and the songs that they pick that's yes. just very special. Probably the the best selling country duo because I can't think of another duo that had so many hits. Mm-hmm. Golden Ring. Oh, I love that one. We're gonna hold oh, on. Right. We're not the jet set. We're not the jet set. Uh, but Tammy also had some hits with somebody else, David Houston. David Houston, Houston, that was one of her first big hits, Almost Persuaded. And I love that song. That is an excellent song. That's one that Billy Sherrill wrote, and he apparently would make all of his artists record that one, so he would get I, I more love that song. royalties. Um, he was a smart man. So uh, Tammy and George end up getting together. He had recently divorced his wife, his second wife, I think, and she had divorced her second husband, so they were each other's third. Right, I guess. And yes. uh, they were kind of the king and queen of yes. Nashville. Um, she was known as the first lady of country music, and he was just possum. Possum. Right. And so they were kind of leading this high life. Um, they had one child together. Georgette. Georgette Jones. I think they were married for six or seven years years but they were pretty tumultuous right i think there was some years. drinking yes. maybe some drug use right or some pills yeah georgia apparently just could not control his drinking he, he was an alcoholic he could control it for a little while and some of the session musicians said that you know if you get a couple of drinks in him he's great but then you kind of hit this point where he just can't, can't function can't can't do anything so apparently he just got kind of worse and worse. And there's this famous story that is often attributed to the Tammy Wynette, George Jones marriage about her hiding all the car keys. Oh, yes, and yes. so he drives his uh, riding long, lawnmower. lawnmower to the bar. In this book that I'm reading, they're saying that that didn't actually happen to Tammy Wynette. It was actually the wife before. Oh. But Tammy said it was her because she was also a little bit of a... Well, maybe it did happen to her, but... It could have happened twice. It could have happened twice. Right. But she was very romantic, and she liked to kind of spin tales. Um, and the biggest tale of all was, was she kidnapped in what the mid-'70s? I think this was after she and Jones had split up. Split and supposedly dating uh, Burt Reynolds, Bert, the bandit. Burt Bert Reynolds. But even after they split up, they still recorded to, together because they were yes. so popular. Golden Ring, I think, came mm-hmm. out after they had split up, and that was probably one of their most famous hits or yeah. popular hits. Yeah, and apparently uh, it was Tammy who decided to end the marriage and uh, I think she still loved George, but yes. she couldn't put up with the couldn't put up with the drinking, the drinking and, and everything. So she did date some pretty famous people, Bert, Bert. and uh, who else? Like some football player, and I can't remember. She kind of got around a little bit. Well, we're not passing judgment again on on Tammy. No, but at at some point she met this low life. She and I can't say I, he doesn't come across as a very personable. Person. Her next husband. Um, George. George Ritchie, Ritchie, who was in the music business, too. He had co-written some of those songs, and he had been in Nashville for a long time. He kind of swoops in. Because Tammy, apparently, she just loved, She needed somebody. She loved to have a man. Yes, yeah, she needed She needed, she needed that, a man to stand by. Right. She needed that um, security mm-hmm. uh, of, of, of a man, of having a man in her, in her world. Right. But I don't think he was the right person for her. Uh, you know, there was a no. lot of talk of abuse. Yeah. Um, well, and then, you know, we think of George as the one who had the problems with drugs and, and alcohol. He ended up becoming a cocaine addict yes. in the late 70s. But what we maybe don't think as much about is that Tammy had a drug problem, too. Tammy had a... I think she might have been a hypochondriac, or she had a lot of health issues, a Mm -hmm. lot of health issues, and she took a lot of medicine for the health issues, and some became addictive. Right. So, yes, she was also had her addiction issues just as George did. Yeah. I think she went to Betty Ford a couple of times, but it never really took. um, And apparently she did have some legitimate health issues, but she also had some addictions too. And then at, at some point, like we mentioned, in the late 70s, 
She was abducted. She was abducted, which never could be verified or confirmed, but it makes for good stories. Yeah. And I I don't know if she needed the attention, and she could have been abducted, and they just never found who did it. Right. Um, But it... I think she needed the attention. Yeah. um, It might have been around when she put out her autobiography, which I found out from reading this biography of her. uh, She didn't really write, which is not a big surprise. Most of them have ghostwriters. Not only did she not write it, she never read it. (laughs) 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 And, but she did say to um, the daughter of her second husband, Don Chapel, they remained friends. Her name was Donna. Donna asked Tammy, you know, how could you say these things about my dad? And Tammy said, well, you know, sometimes, you know, in a book, you just have to tell a story. Oh, you, you, to sell you the know, book and right, make yeah. it interesting. Oh. So apparently she was not above uh, doing some publicity that might not always have been, been true. true. Yeah. But you know what I realized when I was researching this? You and I are older now than Tammy Wynette ever was. I'm sorry. How old was she when she died? 55. <gasps> no. Mm-hmm. And I think She was only 55? Yeah. But due to all those health problems and all the drugs and everything, you would have thought she was like 80. Yes. Know? But that was kind of shocking. Oh, my word. You know, all, all, all these things that we're talking about happened in a brief in a short life and i, I know uh, younger people who are listening to this don't feel like 55 is very young but oh 50 oh, we do <laughs> yes when what year did she die i think it was 1998 98 yeah wow so 20 something years ago 25 yeah. years ago and i think at one point if you've been putting money on it you would have said george was the one yes. who would have had the yes. short life but apparently uh you know after many many Incidents. There's a pretty famous one you can watch on YouTube of him getting oh getting arrested <laughs> or, in his car. Yeah, or arrested. Um, he found he met someone Nancy Nancy and she stood by him. Yeah, and kind of sobered him got up, got him straightened out. So. And he had some more hits later on. Where oh, Tammy yeah. didn't have as many hits after you know the 80s. Well, much. she she broke it off with Billy Sherrill, and who was such a great producer and really crafted that sound around her. Yeah. And then her next husband started producing her. And that's right. Not really a downfall, but not as many hits Right. where George continued to have some hits. Oh yeah. Uh, well, he had his biggest hit after he and Tammy broke, broke right. up, which you mentioned he, he, he stopped loving her today. But then he had like this album that came out in the late 90s, I think changes, mm-hmm. which was a net, Great album. I think I have that on, on CD. Yeah. Um, you know, but he continued to have hits. And he accredited, he credited Nancy for saving him. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, he just died a few years ago because I think I was working here when, when he passed yeah, away. Maybe about 10. We lose track of time. But, right. Um, yes, and we made the young people that work here listen to He Stop Loving Her yes, Today that's because right. they had never heard of him. And they all quit <laughs> eventually. <laughs> I stopped working here today. <laughs> yes. But poor Tammy, and there's been such speculation of how she really died. Right. And what actions George Ritchie took Mm -hmm. that night. Yeah. So. uh, Well, and the weird thing is, you know, she had these four daughters, daughters. and apparently she was as good a mother as she could could be, be, considering that she was world famous. And she was on the road, traveling. But she really did love her children. Um, And then they got cut out of her Yes. Estate, because everything went to George. George. And you're right. There's st- there's still a mystery to this day uh, of exactly what, how. Ha- yeah, she just fell asleep and didn't wake up, yeah. which happens, but, uh, you know. Yeah. But it, only at 55. Yep. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yep. Shocker. That is a shocker. Yeah. But George lived on and uh, was celebrated for his country music mm-hmm. career. Well, and they both live on in these great recordings yes. that they did back when. I've been listening to some of uh, Tammy's, like, Apartment Number no. 9, oh, yeah. and it's just, it gets you. Oh, yeah. You she's, a, she's, great. She's, my, she's my favorite country artist, female. Yeah. Uh, because she is, and I don't want to say it, I mean, I lived in a trailer park. She's, like, my neighbor at that trailer park, mm-hmm. you know. She's your neighbor, but she has that, that, that voice yeah. that just just 
makes your the hair stand up on yes. the back of your neck. And I think Elton John did a tribute album to her, Stand By Your Man. It was really mm-hmm. good. Had all these different artists. And that's just it. The 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 rock and roll artists, like the Stones loved her. Mm-hmm. Elton John loved her. She kind of encompassed a lot of different people other than those in Nashville. Right. Well, and she had that kind of late career hit of that dance song. Do you remember that? I don't. Um, it was by a sort of electronic dance band called KLF, I believe. And it was in maybe 1995. They got her to be a guest artist on their song called uh, Justified and Ancient. And oh. it was like a big dance hit. I uh, don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Fun, I can remember things from, you know, 40, 50 years ago, but not right. that. Well, you know, that's not a bad song, but if you really want to remember Tammy, go back to those like late 60s, yes, early and the albums, 70s yes. recordings, and the ones that she did with George, too, were just really very special. They were. Karen, are we going to hold on? We're going to hold. I can't sing, so I won't even no, try that. I, th- I think if we actually sing the song on here, we have to pay the song, <laughs> yeah, yes. songwriter. So. But we are going to hold on to our jobs, hopefully. Yes, and to <laughs> our, our podcast. podcast <laughs> yes, and we've already made it past 55, so hopefully we really? can live at least as long as George George did. Yeah, how old was he when he died? Don't it's tell me like 59. In his 80s. Okay, good. I think he made it to like 80 or 81. Oh, good for him. With, for considering yeah, all well, that he, he went, went through, through. Yes, that's pretty good. That, that you know, it's odd that you know he lived. He had this alcohol addiction problem, and he lived his 80s, and Tammy mm-hmm. died in 50s, and then Elvis died in his 40s from the addiction. Yep. Which is a whole another podcast. Yes. Yeah, so just say no. Yes. Just say no. Just like Nancy said. Just say <laughs> no. All right, Karen. Well, we're gonna hold on. Thanks for listening.